What is up everyone? It is Saturday night, a very hot and sweaty Saturday night. And tonight I am going to continue with something I started last night. I got a head start last night before getting the camera out. I'll show you exactly, I'll, I'll catch you up and show you what I did last night. It's not much, just a little bit of work. Um, Today we are going to be making some progress with the living room entertainment setup. This is going to be spread across a couple of weeks just because I'm going to have to do this when I get time um, and do this as stuff comes in. I'm missing a few little pieces that I need in order to make this all work. It's not going to be the most interesting or groundbreaking part of the series by far. We're not looking at any kind of new equipment in terms of like TVs and receivers and speakers and stuff. All of that stuff is staying exactly the same. This is just kind of like um, a, a little kind of, I guess you could call it like an infrastructure update. I'm finally putting in sockets for the surround speakers and running cabling, at least kind of semi-properly for this setup because I haven't had a proper cabling solution at all since we put it in when we moved in like nearly four years ago now. So I'm gonna show you what I did yesterday and catch you up. I just wanna say before we begin filming, um, this room is in dire need of redecoration. We have lived here for four years now and it wasn't in immaculate condition when we moved in. Um, so things are looking rough around the edges. We need a new sofa. It's completely collapsed on one side. It's done really well. It was secondhand, 50 quid. Bought it when we moved in, can't grumble. There's a big rip in our footstool. Um, the kids have, have done a good number on our new TV stand, so it's covered in scratches and stuff. I don't mind that at all. I bought it to take a beating, and it's taking a beating. The main thing is um, it's protecting our equipment. So what I'm kind of trying to say is, um, <laughs> Feel free to wear blinkers when watching this video because things are looking a little rough around here. But this is all part of trying to make it better. I'm still not done with the uh, hallway redecoration that you saw in the last part of the network upgrade video. Um, we're just so behind with what we want to do with the house, but time is, is difficult, as I'm sure loads of you guys know, you know. Busy lives makes it difficult to completely redecorate a room, rip a room apart and paint it and whatnot. Anyway, um, we're going to do what we can in this video and a big part of uh, our problem will be solved from the things that we do in this part. So I hope you guys enjoy, I hope you guys get something from this and uh, as always, I'm no expert with this stuff. This is just me doing my own thing and trying to make a setup work best for what we want. So. Let's do it. So first I want to show you guys what we're trying to eliminate. Um, basically, these are the surround cables for the rear two speakers coming from the receiver. And this is the windowsill right here. And since the very beginning, as you can see, there's a gap underneath this skirting. I've just had them sort of shoved under the skirting and they stay like that and that's absolutely fine. Um, and round here, where the gas meter is, They've always just kind of trailed out along here and I haven't really done anything with them. Problem is, the kids have now begun, and I mean this happened months and months ago for the first time, uh, pulling at the speaker cable and pulling it all out from underneath, underneath the skirting. They've also now, uh, lately, and this was the last straw, this finally gave me the kick up the ass to do this, they pulled all of this excess cabling out from behind the sofa. This was all neatly raveled behind there. This white one, We'll be taking this out completely, it's now totally redundant. If you guys remember when we first moved in on the rear surround speakers, I had some LED strips on the back. They are no longer there, so this was powering those coming from the front. That's gone. And also, there are actually doubled up speaker cables here. If you guys remember, I used to have two sets of surrounds when I was bonkers and way over the top when we moved in. And I had two com completely different surround sound systems in one room, which was just kind of crazy. Um, I've now merged those setups, as you know, and I only have two surround cables, so a lot of this speaker cabling will go. Now, we're gonna eliminate all that. We're gonna make things neat along here. Um, basically, this box skirting, this DIY box skirting that the previous owner did, behind here are radiator pipes, and they go into the radiator over there that's behind Jess's stuff in the corner there. Um, 
I am not going to run the speaker cable within the skirting. That was my original plan. I was just going to whip all this off the wall, shove cables behind and put it back. Um, however, I ripped all of this style skirting, like make your own box skirting off in the hallway. And um, it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle to put back. It's all screwed in uh, horribly and it's just just disgusting. I don't want to touch it really um, because I'd be nervous that I'd be able to get it back. I mean it's not perfectly fitting now but it would be difficult to get back I think. Um, although the hallway was made up of several different parts and this is just one chunk but I'm just going to make my life simpler and for now I'm going to run the smallest line of trunking along the top of the skirting. Uh, that way the cables are completely separate from the pipes. Uh, I've got no fear of them getting too hot or resting on the pipes and, and melting or anything along those lines. And also, I can just leave this intact and then we can tackle this in the future when we finally know what we're going to try and do with the living room redecoration. So, a little bit of uh, trunking, it's going to look really nice. So, let me show you what I did yesterday. Um, this is one of the surround speakers. This is the one in this corner and basically uh, up until now it's always been uh, the cable just runs under the sofa and it just plugs straight into the back of the speaker well yesterday I put in a socket and here is the socket and they have banana plugs on the front uh, sorry banana plugs are on my speaker cable rather and there are binding posts on the socket and it's pretty sweet. I'm going to move the sofa in a minute, give you guys a better look. Um, that's basically what I'm trying to achieve. So the speakers are plugged into the wall and there's just a very short cable coming from the back of the speaker to the socket. So no way of kids pulling cables and wrapping them around each other's necks and things like that. All the cables are just nice and intact. And the worst that they can actually do is just pull out the cables. That is, you know, not the end of the world. Um, you can just see a little bit of the tiny, tiny trunking there that the cables are running in. And there are a few other exciting little bits and bobs happening in this corner, but I'm gonna move the sofa before I show you guys that. So coming over into my little box of supplies. Um, firstly, we have the other socket faceplate for uh, connecting the other surround speaker. So we'll fit that box today and we'll get that speaker connected in exactly the same way. I'm hoping to get that done today as well as run the cabling underneath the windowsill. And I probably won't get this done today, but very soon in the future, behind the receiver, we will basically put um, a dual speaker faceplate, so four binding posts total uh, behind the receiver on a box so that I can have short little speaker cables from the back of the receiver straight into the uh, box on the wall and then that wires it directly into um, the back socket. So that will be perfect. Basically the only thing that I've gone out of my way to buy for this project are these faceplates. They weren't the cheapest thing on the planet but I didn't want to get uber uber cheap ones and I could see that these were quality. Obviously I'm using a white faceplate. They had them in all sorts of different finishes. Um, the goldish ones that we have in this room, these sorts of style switches um, were indeed there. I could have them on the gold faceplates if I wanted. They would have matched my sockets but I just couldn't bring myself to buy any of those. I don't like gold socket. I don't like a gold anything really. Um, so I just went with white plastic. It was the simplest and the cheapest and none of this stuff is very pretty. The trunking isn't very pretty. Uh, so it's just functional at this stage, purely functional. That's what we're looking for. So that's the only thing I really bought. Obviously we've got a couple of back boxes and things. Um, as well, I have this dual Ethernet faceplate, this Cat6 faceplate. While I am behind the TV installing this, I may as well install this. And this will prepare the back of the TV ready to receive the network signal. As you guys remember, in the last part of the network video, I left cable ready to run a network feed behind the TV. It's still using power line at the moment, but this faceplate will be ready to accept that cable once I feed it through. And the second port will also be used for something as well. So that's gonna be very exciting. So here's a bit of a closer look at what's going on. As you can see, I've got the speaker plugged in and the cable goes nicely down the stand, out the back, very, very short. I could probably shorten it even more um, and then straight in with nice high quality banana plugs. Um, we've got 
this mini mini trunking going all the way along and that's how it's going to look so not the prettiest thing in the world but a lot better than just loose cable going everywhere uh, that's bringing speaker cable into this box but there are a couple of other tricks going on also through here we have got cat six and cat six is going into this box and up Again, I'm reusing a lot of parts from other projects, so yes, this trunking is a little big, but it's all I had. Cat6 is going all the way up here, and it's going up behind the DVD rack, and it's poking out at the top. And you can see a bundle of Cat6 there, and also power cable. And that power cable is here, awaiting a plug to be put on the end of it. And that power cable is just tucking up here, and is going up the same trunking and it'll be plugged in here into this socket and you can probably tell by now that I'm prepping the future for the addition of my projector so cat six and power that's all I need to the projector which will run over there and that's why I've got a few sockets in here ready for the projector uh, the only thing I don't have is a single network connector for it um, but I can easily pick one of those up in the future. We won't be doing that quite yet anyway. I was just running the cabling in preparation. So the next thing, and I'm gonna grab these because we're gonna do something quite ceremonious. Underneath here, this is how far I got by the way. This is the uh, little tiny trunking coming along the back. You can see Cat6 and a single speaker cable. What I am gonna do is ditch this cable coming through the wall here. This is the TV aerial cable coming all the way from upstairs. It tacks along the front of the house. It goes back into the wall down here, all the way under, all the way over to the TV. It looks absolutely horrible on the front of the house. So I want to rip it off and I'm going to get rid of it internally as well. So we'll just chop it right here. Okay, folks, I have just completed the second, um, binding post faceplate and this is ready to be screwed back on now all of the other cables are passed through um, I'll just screw this on and then I'll show you guys the end result for this evening all right guys I haven't hoovered yet so apologies for the dust and whatnot but we are back and looking good so as you can see we have the box on the wall with the speaker connected. Haven't cleaned anything. This is all really rough. I'm gonna be pulling these back out in a week or so anyway to replace this cable. I'm gonna put thicker gauge cable on the outside just because these, uh, these cables are a bit spindly. I'm gonna get some um, sleeved cable and use that instead. It'll just be a little more robust on the outside. Um, it'll look a little nicer as well. Um, but yes, this is now complete in terms of the run around the back of the room. Um, here's another look at this side I showed you earlier. Now a couple of little snags. Firstly, I did run trunking along the back of the radiator and I thought that I would be able to close it and I couldn't. I just can't get my hands up in there to close it. Um, as a side note, I'll never be using this type of trunking again. It's too small. Well, if I was running like one cable, just one, then I would use it. Um, and it really would depend on where I wanted to put it. I'm not that impressed with the accessories for the trunking. So when I was using this box trunking on my previous project, all of the accessories clipped over the top of the trunking. So every cut that you did, if you clipped like a corner piece or a straight coupler onto the trunking, it would cover your cut and it would just clip on over the top, no messing. Um, this stuff, because it's so small, the corner pieces have to clip on the sides of the trunking so you have to clip them on before you stick it on really and obviously you only get one real go at sticking it on you can't unstick it so take this join here for example there's no coupler here it was just too awkward to try and get it in it's very very fiddly so anyway back to the radiator uh, I couldn't close it so if you see here right behind the radiator the trunking starts to open and even over here on this corner you can see that it's still open there at the back but to be perfectly honest, folks, I mean, it's not the prettiest job in the world anyway, and having that open behind the radiator, no one is gonna know. So, 
yeah, it's, you know, there's it's, it's as good as I can get it. So the main part that I was concerned with, of course, was tidying up the cables along here so that the kids couldn't grab any cables at all. And as you can see, that is complete. Uh, around the socket is a little messy, but it turned out okay. You can see the cabling here. My original plan was to drill straight through and to get the trunking flush up to this box in the corner, but hear me out for a second. Firstly, there's a huge chunk of wood here, really thick, that's holding the box together. And right behind it is the gas pipe going through the wall. So I wasn't comfortable drilling straight through. It wasn't worth it. So I just drilled slightly off to the side so that I miss those wood, that piece of wood. I've drilled at an angle and then all the cables come through. And then I'll do the same over this end when we do the front end at a later date. Well, hopefully tomorrow night but we'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, you can see a little bit of cable, but to be perfectly honest, folks, one day, I'm not gonna use the word soon because I've been saying this since I moved in, I'm gonna get this gas meter changed and I am really, really gonna try and get them to move it outside the house, put it outside on the outside wall, which is where they do install them these days. It's a pain in the ass having it here. This box is really ugly. Of course, it's gonna suck completely doing that because Underneath here is one hell of a mess. Um, skirting, laminate flooring, just a total no-go. So when this is taken out, this corner of the room will be a massive mess. But it'll be worth it in the end because when we redecorate and get it all sorted, um, this box won't be here and it'll just be that much easier to do things. Now, when that happens, I'm kind of hoping that I will replace all of this. And if I do it again, what I'm hoping to do is, if we do replace the skirting, get a better boxed skirting solution, run all of the cabling within it and get back. And then, you know, I don't know, maybe redo the back end. I'm not too sure. The back end is actually okay. It's not perfect because I'm no expert, but it's certainly functional. Um, now, the reason, I think a few of you may be asking this, why did I run the Cat 6 all the way over, bother running it through two boxes just to run it up this corner? Well, I knew I had this big ugly trunking going up the corner and I had a choice. I could either do it here or I could do it there. Now, if I was to do it there, when you walk into the room, you would instantly see it. It would be there in the corner and it would go all the way up. This way, doing it here, it's hidden behind this pillar. You can only see it when you're this side and it stops at the DVDs anyway. So once this is full of DVDs, you can't see the cables. And then I'll just use a smaller piece at the top to get to the projector. So it's much less intrusive being in this corner and it was worth the hassle to run the Cat 6 um, through the two boxes, which was harder than I thought it was gonna be. And unfortunately, when I was screwing this box onto the wall. I was just screwing away, minding my own business, and I actually snagged the sleeving of the cable quite significantly with the screw. So I'm really hoping that data transfer will still be okay. If not, if worse comes to the worst, there's enough space in this box, I can take the front off, I can cut out the damaged piece of cable and put a, a join in it. I can hopefully squeeze a keystone connector in there or just join it together somehow. Um, but yeah, I'm, really, I'm just crossing fingers with that one that I haven't damaged the cable too much by screwing into it. Uh, it was only catching the edge, but it was still enough to damage it. So that's a bit of a shame because obviously it was very hard work to run that piece of cable around. And if it hadn't been for the Cat 6, if I was just doing speaker cable, then this trunking would have been an absolute breeze. This trunking is not big enough for speaker cable, two, two lots of 18 gauge speaker cable and uh, a Cat6 cable and if you're wondering what the size of the trunking is that is a very good question I basically bought a pack online uh, Here we go. Let's have a look. This is the packet that it came in I bought two packs actually um, Yeah, it's this stuff D line does that say? Yeah, so that's how it's meant to look if you install it really clean you know, great for running up to that little thermostat. You know, absolutely fantastic. That's what it's designed for. Not really designed for what I've tried to do here. Um, that's why I haven't ended up with the best result. But 
anyway, it's functional and as long as nobody rips it off the wall anytime soon, I'll be happy. If it serves its purpose for a couple of years, then that's good. And then I can sort of work on thinking about a better, more permanent solution that's incorporated into the redecoration sometime in the future. So that's it for tonight. Hopefully tomorrow night I will do this end. All of the cabling is just gathered up in this box at the moment. Um, but tomorrow night, if I could get the sockets on the wall and interface with the receiver, that would be absolutely perfect. I'll be a very happy man. So hopefully see you tomorrow night. All right, folks, we are back. It is the next day and I'm doing a little bit more recycling. Left over from a project that never happened, I have this larger piece of trunking. It's the same style as the one we ran yesterday, but it's just bigger. So I need that for the front end because I need to fit two network cables and two speaker cables. And there is no hope in hell they will fit through that tiny thing. I, I didn't think they would anyway. Um, it was my plan all along to use this. So yeah, the struggles I had yesterday didn't contribute to that decision. But what I am pleased about is all of this stuff that's kind of rattling around, just taking up space and getting in the way and constantly falling over because I've got it leaning up against a wall upstairs. It just means that I'm using it up and it wasn't a waste of money and it's, you know, being used for a good thing. So this single piece we will run today. This is the only piece of trunking. I've got my network tools down because, of course, we're going to terminate um, two network connections today. And I'm quite enthused about this today. I'm pretty tired because I was up early with the kids, but hopefully we get it done. And once it's done, I can I can pretty much sit tight until three, four weeks down the line when we go for the next stage of this. So this will be a bit of a spread out video, but you know, the more footage I record, the better on stuff like this, I think. Now, what I am going to do, because some of you are probably wondering, especially if you saw it in yesterday's footage, what the heck has happened to the center channel? <laughs> well, it has been, um, I don't know, what's the word, abused ever so slightly. So um, the kids basically ripped all of the kind of vinyl covering from the cabinet off. That happened fairly quickly. It begun to rip off the back. And to be fair, when I got it, it was unpeeling ever so slightly because um, it was secondhand. It wasn't in the greatest of conditions. I, I won it for a fiver or tenner or something like that. I can't remember. Something crazy on eBay. Um, this is the Technics SBC80. It's a 70 watt center speaker, quite a large center speaker. Very happy with the sound from it. Anyway, the kids ripped off the vinyl covering and then they got to work on the grill. Um, the grill was just hanging off and it had all sharp plastic po poking through the fabric. So I was the one that eventually ripped off the grill completely. Um, it also snapped off of three of its posts apart from one, so one post came out properly, but three of them snapped. And then the kids got to work on pulling at the cable in the back and the entire input panel came out and it still is a little bit loose actually. I can pull it out with a bit of force. So this came out, pulled on the cables within and a couple of the spades popped off from the uh, three drivers in the front. So the speaker completely stopped working. So what I've done is I've now soldered all of the cables onto the back of the drivers. So no matter how hard they pull on that back piece, it will not come out. And my next stage is to glue this in the back. Now this is a really ugly cabinet. It looks horrific as you guys can see, but this is purely temporary. The plan is, because I'm really happy with the sound from this guy and I don't really intend on upgrading any of my speakers and it's nice to keep uniform uh, brands across the front so you know keep your three at least your left center and your right the same brand um, even though these are a decade or so apart maybe even more it's still nice you know Technics all at the front uh, I don't want to mix and match too much so I'm going to keep an eye for another one of these guys on eBay I'm going to put it in and instead of having it on top, I'm gonna to do what many of you suggested originally. I'm gonna incorporate it into the cabinet. Now, I'm not looking forward to that job because you guys can remember just how tightly I wired everything in the back of the cabinet. It is gonna be one hell of a job to move things around. And I'm kind of gutted about it because that's the only reason why I wanna move anything. Everything else is perfect. So all of that wiring could have remained intact, 
but alas, I've got to move some of it because I need to put a center speaker in there. Now, I'm not an incredibly happy bunny about this because this shelf is a little too low for a speaker. So what I will be doing, I'll put some rubber feet on the front of it and angle it upwards so it'll be firing out of the cabinet as much as possible. Um, and then what's really cool about all of this, even though these are duffed in a little bit, the dust caps are pushed in and, you know, they've been through a little bit of uh, abuse with the kids. I've got three spare drivers. I've got a complete spare driver set for the future center speaker that I have. So I can take these drivers out, put them in a little box, chuck this cabinet away and just uh, keep them as spares, which is awesome. Not that I ever foresee blowing any of these speakers. Um, although, wait until another little part in the video. We've got some work to do on that guy. Stay tuned if you want to uh, see me fiddle with speakers and talk about audio because you guys know I can go on and on and on for that sort of thing. Um, but yes, that's basically the plan. I've spent over five minutes explaining this now. So um, yeah, new SBC80 in there. Keep these parts as spares and it'll be out of harm's way and it'll be completely black. It'll blend in, point it upwards a little bit. Job done. It'll be gorgeous. So what we're going to do today, we're going to pull out the cabinet and we're going to do some work on the back wall of that end. So I have never pulled this stand out and the dust shows that. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so I forgot how lazy I got with the end of the wiring and I also completely forgot that I didn't have a long enough phono cable for the Betamax VCR so I had to use this mega long one and it's all bundled up back here. Completely forgot about all that but these two sections are wired beautifully, um, a little too beautifully so adding that centre speaker is going to be a bit of a ball lake. Um, anyway I'm not going to worry about that now. We are focusing in this area so we are going to have another piece of trunking here followed by two boxes one for gigabit one for speakers and they will sit nicely there on the skirting board so yeah right next to that double socket so that'll actually be really successful um i'm gonna make a start okay folks progress update um i broke a box so Unfortunately, I've got two slightly different style boxes on the wall, meaning that one protrudes slightly more. They're both 25mm depth, but this is just from a different manufacturer, so there's a slight variation. But it actually worked out for the better because... Um, wait, oh, I thought... <laughs> I picked it up and it was stuck together, but it's just this sticker on the back. I did break it. Um, it actually worked out for the best, as I was saying, because with this type of trunking, it sits very close to the bottom of the box if you're running it alongside the skirting. So, as you can see, the punch outs on this box are quite high up in comparison to this one where they're nice and low down. So I was able to do a nice discreet little hole in this box without too much trouble. So you guys can see this is the one for the network. We have got one with the cross on here which is simply a little line up to this end and what's going to happen here is I'm going to put an RJ45 on and we are going to use as you saw in my network video there's a little hole in the wall well yeah that's just where I've pulled this cable out from now because I cut it the other end but there's a little hole in the wall there that was feeding this old phone socket and I'm basically going to run the network cable that I've already got prepared in the cupboard under the stairs all the way along the hallway past the front door underneath the floor and through into this room so it will eventually link up with this cable but that's for a network video the cable that we're concerned about is the one for the projector which is the one that doesn't have a cross on it so we're gonna have a two port network faceplate here and that's gonna be all tidy then of course we're gonna have one of our lovely banana plug faceplates on this guy the one with the blue tape is the left surround speaker, so I can get it in a nice order and there won't be any confusion. Um, I think before I do the faceplates, I'm going to get the trunking on the wall and make this look very tidy. And yeah, then we'll do the faceplates and we're on the home stretch. All right, guys, so mixed reviews. Um, I got the faceplates on, as you can see. Very happy, looks clean, looks neat. Unfortunately, though, oh, God. <sighs> such as life after running all the cable getting everything 
soldered. So bearing in mind, cables are soldered here and running through these boxes, through the trunking that's all attached to the wall and everything, all neat and tidy. I was then, after punching down the network cables and screwing the faceplate on, I got a little bit too overexcited, screwing it on, rushing, over-tightened, and crack. Cracked that box a pretty beauty. So I am absolutely gutted about that because otherwise this would have been a near as damn it pretty perfect job here um, and the cleanest part of the whole setup but now I've got a big crack in the corner as you can see perfect fit there and everything made me very happy and then so ah oh, mega bummer I'm totally not changing the box by the way no bloody way it's behind the TV stand so nobody can see it anyway I know it's there nobody else does um, apart from several thousand people now that I've just told on the internet but yeah it's not going to do anything obviously if this was mains electricity I would change the box straight away um, it's just network cable so I'm gonna forget about it anyway I've made up these little jumper cables these are temporary we'll be replacing these further on in the video but I'm going to connect these up to our faceplate and we're going to test the speakers test my soldering test everything. I've only tested one of the rear speakers as well, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, may have to slide the TV a little bit closer to plug this into the receiver. So we have the speakers hooked up to the new panel, and if we just go quickly into level calibration, here we are for surround right and surround left. Right, left. So I'm a very happy bunny about that. That is good news. So what I'm going to do is tidy up all of my stuff. Quick last hoover, push it all back, and then we'll take a little listen and triple check that everything's okay. Just to show you guys how the sockets line up with the setup when it's pushed back, all of the receiver cabling has free space there and then all of the sockets line up with the middle of the cabinet where there is loads of room behind the N64 as you can see so there's no sorry about that Let's whack the camera there is no obstruction for the sockets which is great and you know I can tidy up those cables in the future but we're gonna we're gonna be pulling this out again really soon anyway so everything is working absolutely fine this is what the corner is looking like now that we have finished this little part. Obviously, with these cables, this LAN cable will be completely gone when um, the other cable is run, because the socket is there for it now, so that's perfect. And then this is just the power cable for the lamp, and it's never bothered me before because there's been a million other cables here, but obviously quite easily what could be done is well the lamp is absolutely buggered anyway but when we get a new lamp um, run the cable down the bottom end here and bring it back up underneath and plug it in here so um, that'll actually be a lot cleaner and the plug will fit nicer because at the moment it's absolutely terrible there with the way this is done I could come up under there and yeah it could be a lot tidier so that would mean absolutely zero cables in this corner then which is obviously ideal um, so that's it for this particular little portion. It's a Sunday evening and I think the next bit of progress will probably be in two or three weeks time. Um, maybe a little longer actually, maybe September time-ish because a few things are happening now over the summer holidays. Um, but this has been a good little stint and definitely something that needed doing. Okay guys, I am back with an update to this video and it's been a couple of months since we did the cabling changes. Nothing else has changed at all, so you haven't missed out on anything. I've just been too busy and honestly just searching for things to be able to finish this off. Um, one, one thing was the centre speaker. Now I know earlier in the video, because I checked back a minute ago on the edit, um, I spoke about replacing this with another identical model and then I'd have some spare speakers for 
the, the center channel speaker. Um, but truth is, I haven't been able to find one of these exact models at all, at least for a fair price, because I paid pennies for this guy. Um, they're all either overpriced or there's just no deals out there at all. Um, and as you can see, uh, it's actually got worse, so it is now completely trashed. Believe it or not, it actually still works and sounds fine, uh, but it just looks horrible and it's completely ridiculous. So today we're replacing it with a different center channel speaker entirely. It's a completely different model. It's a completely different type of speaker, um, but it is Technics branded. So at least the front three speakers will all be Technics. Um, they're not sonically matched at all, and there is no real benefit sonically to matching the Technic Center with the left and right because these are from 1980 and this new one is probably from around the early noughties, late 90s, early noughties, and this one is from the 90s. So, you know, they're, they're a couple of decades apart. They sound nothing alike. Um, but it's just so that it's not a completely kind of random setup. It looks as if there's some kind of planning and logic to it. Plus, I kind of like tech Technics products. They're cheap and cheerful and uh, decent sound for the money. Plus, there's loads of it available on eBay. So let's unbox this speaker and see what it looks like. I hope it's kind of going to match some of this stuff. I've got a feeling it's going to look a little bit too kind of new. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so first impressions, it is much bigger and it's a completely different shape and it's way heavier. So, this is all a good sign so far. I'm just gonna dig into this bubble wrap. Really good packaging and a really good eBay seller actually um, messaged me straight away. I sent him an offer. It was an auction with a buy, in, uh, with a make an offer option. And the auction was not getting any interest. It had like half an hour left. And I made him an offer that was 20 quid lower than the starting price. And to my amazement, he actually took it. Um, so I got this for an okay deal. It wasn't an, an outstanding deal like this guy. I can't remember how much I paid for this guy. Have to take a look back at a previous video, but I want to say it was like a fiver and a fiver postage or like 15 quid overall or something really cheap um, for an eBay purchase. But yeah, I paid a little bit more for this one. But hopefully it'll sound good. Um, it's got... Yeah, I'll show you that in a minute, actually. There's no point talking about it while it's still wrapped up. I'll dig in and then we'll chat about what this kind of looks like. So here it is unboxed. It is shorter than my current center speaker, but it is deeper, much heavier, and way more solid. Like, way, way more solid. In comparison, this feels like just a sort of cheap, you know, home theater in a box kind of uh, center speaker. And this feels like a dedicated quality bit of kit. Um, so this is the Technics SBC500 center speaker. And I did just check for reference really quickly. This was released in 1998. Um, so still a 21 year old speaker. Um, it looks great. There is a little bit of light gray trim on the front and that just gives it an ever so slightly sort of more modern look that I wish it didn't have there. Um, I'm glad I got the grey version. There is also a silver version and I saw quite a cheap silver um, exact one of these going for a great price on eBay. And I was going to go for it, but silver would have just looked awful. I'm so glad I didn't. So the plan with this guy is to actually try and squeeze it into the cabinet because this just got trashed on the outside and this has got to survive because I can't just keep buying replacement speakers. Um, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, this, this sounds great, but it's just wrecked. Um, so it's kind of forced me to purchase this, but it may be a good thing in the long run because I've got a feeling that this is going to sound pretty pucker. So this is a two-way speaker, I believe. It's got three drivers in the front, uh, 100 watts, and it's also got this strange thing on the top. Uh, they call it the center focus system. And if we flip it round, oh, I'm not sure if it's safe to pick it up with that. 
um, there is a switch for centre focus on and off, which is quite interesting. And you can see from the little frequency response chart here how that centre focus switch is meant to be affecting the sound. So that is quite interesting. We'll flip that on and off and use our ears to kind of see what that's doing, um, or hear what that's doing rather. Instead of just sort of sprung speaker terminals, push in, push out on the back, we've got nice twisty binding posts, which will probably support banana plugs in as well. There's the label on the back for a little bit of information for those who are interested. And yeah, all we're gonna do now is swap it over. We're gonna plonk it in front of the TV for now. Um, we're gonna ditch this temporarily. Then before going to bed tonight, we'll put this guy back on for use tomorrow during the day. And then tomorrow evening when I have more time, we will try and incorporate this into the entertainment system. And I think everyone will be really glad when I do that because everyone asked me to do that in the first place. So I really should have because then I would have probably had space for it. But as it stands, we have one, two, three, four components in the way of putting this in the cabinet. And it's looking like you can't really put anything on top of this because it may mess up this thing. So yeah, um, let's just give it a whirl. Okay, so I've set the, um, let's just take a look, I'll show you instead, uh, the speaker configuration. Um, because I have no subwoofer in this setup, no is selected, and then obviously the front speakers are in full band mode, aka there is no low cut or uh, high pass filter. But I've set the high pass filter for this guy um, to 50 hertz because, according to the spec sheet, this guy doesn't kick in until 50 hertz. So sending it 40 or anything lower is uh, obviously pointless. Um, so yeah, that's the only adjustment I have made in comparison to the previous speaker where it was just full band. I didn't even know it was. I would have made the same adjustment with the previous speaker anyway because naturally um, it probably can't even reproduce anything close to 50 hertz to be honest. But we'll just make that alteration just for um, convenience. Uh, level calibration will leave the same at the moment because I don't know. I've had a quick listen to the white noise, like a three second listen and... Um, the my left and right well my left sounds brighter we've got a little issue with the right speaker that we're going to amend later on in this particular video um anyway the speaker is connected let's play something back take a listen i've got the center focus switched off at the moment so let's take a look and see what difference that actually makes so i've just had a listen to a couple of films just just literally two seconds of a couple of films and already the difference is night and day. I think we've been suffering for a while with the other one. Um, the switch on the back basically, from what I can gather, just turns this top piece on and it blasts a load of high end out the sides out of these grills here. Um, and yeah, extra high end is, is really quite welcome. I've got it set on at the moment. Um, but high end aside, it's very full bodied. It's a really rich, rich vocal. Um, with the other one, I guess, because of probably the cabinet quality, um, there's no insulation or anything in here. It's just an echoey, boomy box. And uh, I don't even know what's rattling around in there. Um, but the dialogue is very boxy. So female vocals tended to sound quite fine, pretty okay. Um, but anything male, anything deep and boomy, there was no richness at all to it. It was just really boxy and quite horrible. Um, but this so far sounds really smooth. Um, so we will watch some TV tonight. We'll make sure to watch some 5.1 content. And then tomorrow when I come back to try and fit this into the cabinet, I'll be able to give you a more in-depth uh, audio review. Um, now this is all, you know, relatively speaking, I'm giving compliments to this from the kind of um, basis of building up a system like this from 20 year old second hand kit from eBay. So, um, you know, it's not, it's not going to be absolutely outstanding compared to like modern home theatre gear, but um, it's, yeah, it's sounding really nice and uh, I'm chuffed with the purchase so far. So I'll update you guys tomorrow. 
Okay guys, it's been a few days and we swapped back to this center speaker after that first night of using this one just because I didn't want this to get damaged and it was a night and day difference. So today we're finally properly integrating this into the setup, ditching this, I'm just going to bin it folks, there's nothing worth salvaging there whatsoever, which is a big shame. Uh, but moving on, let's take a little look at the scenario inside the cupboard, and apologies in advance um, for any dust that you see. So we're going to have a little bit of an issue with this, it's going to be difficult I think because we've got so many components in here. So the main components that we're trying to move around, because obviously we really want the center speaker in the center, um, we've got the DVD player, we've got the Harmony Hub, the switch in its dock, and also the Apple TV. Now the switch is going to be quite easy because, like a lot of people recommended when I first put this setup together, I can just turn it on its side and I can shift it all the way up that way. So I can even have the switch pretty close to the Xbox. Um, that's kind of annoying because if I would have done that originally, what I would have done is, because the Wii U is vertical here, I would have had the Wii U followed by the Switch followed by the Xbox because it just makes more sense, it kind of steps down. Um, but that will require quite a lot of cable rejigging where I'm hoping that there's just enough slack on here to get the Switch turned on its side. Apple TV, we may be able to just shove that on top of the Xbox. The vent is here. Uh, oh, actually, hang on. No, it's not. It's the other, the opposite way to what I thought it was. But maybe we can just shove it there. I don't know. It's all going to get pretty congested in there, to be honest, folks. And I don't want to sacrifice anything. I know a lot of you guys think I'm crazy with all of this stuff. But, you know, like I've explained before, this is all just fun and entertainment. And, you know, th there's no point sacrificing any of it. Um, and, you know, you've got to have the N64 and stuff. There's, n there's no way that we can eliminate any of this stuff. So anyway, um, I'm going to have a little jiggle around with just the stuff that you see here, just see what kind of cable length we've got. If I can get away with doing this without pulling the entire rack out, that would be awesome, because as soon as I do that, all of the toys that are wedged behind are just going to come flying out, and also it's going to be really dusty, and it's just going to be a pain and make this a ten times bigger job. But... I'm sort of 90% sure I'm going to have to pull it out anyway because I know that somewhere along the line there's not going to be enough slack on these components. So, it is kind of a mixed bag at the moment. Um, this thing is huge, as you can see, it takes up a whole shelf. It was actually even difficult to get in, it doesn't fit past the door. Um, so, I've turned the switch on its side, that's not too much of a problem. Because I've got that LAN adapter hanging out the back, it's quite a tight bundle of cable and it's sort of floating in mid-air, so it doesn't look very nice when you look through there. It doesn't look as clean as the rest of the cabling, um, but I could probably relieve some of that tension if I just cut that cable tie and redid it at the back. Um, for the smaller two components, I'm not crazy about this, to be honest. If I... I don't know, if I was really being picky. I wouldn't want to put anything on top of the speaker, um, especially because of this top part and all the high end that comes out the sides. And you've got two different shaped and sized objects here. Um, it just doesn't look very good. But to be honest, you can't even, you don't even really know they're there. I'm also not too sure how this is going to work because I believe this hub blasts out the infrared. Um, obviously I've got the extenders. I've got one down there and I've got one there. Um, but yeah, that's kind of okay. The Apple TV is there, and that's not too bad. Um, but the only bummer is, I've completely left out the Blu-ray player. And the cabling for the Blu-ray player is extremely tight. So um, even if it's just for the Blu-ray player, I'll have to pull this out to retrieve the power and HDMI for that. And it kind of makes sense anyway, because by the looks of it, I'll have to pull it somewhere completely different on the setup maybe on top of this guy because this is kind of the only little area we have left and things are a bit wonky in here today but yeah that could work let's have a little look again a little bit sandwiched but you know 
the old and the new. I guess it's just as crammed as having the PlayStation on top of that video player, so I don't know. We'll uh, we'll give this a go first though, see what it sounds like there, and then we will worry about the cabling for the Blu-ray player. That was pretty painless compared to what I thought it was going to be. So the Blu-ray player is sitting right here, and I was able to cut only two of my cable ties, which is really cool, and pull some slack through from this bundle. So, um... Yeah, as you can see, still really neat going up to the Harmony Hub. Um, same goes for the speaker feed to the centre channel. I just pulled it out of the loom that was going up to the TV, and I rerouted it around here. And then, apologies for the various straining noises, folks, it's a bit confined. Um, you can see the HDMI there coming up from that loom. And yeah, basically, what I'm trying to say is I've retained the exact same amount of cable neatness and I know it looks a bit bonkers because well there are cables everywhere but as you probably remember from the part of the series where I wired up this setup this is incredibly neat considering how many pieces of equipment are here and how they're all connected so uh, I'm gonna push all of this back make sure everything is working and we'll take a good listen so I know it's kind of difficult through video. Um, I can't really play you guys any of these films or whatever I'm testing this with, but I am chuffed. Now, basically, I've cranked up the center channel output. This is a bit of a beefier speaker, and I was kind of feeling like the amplifier was just tickling it. Even though it was giving me a nice, rich sound, it was kind of lacking in a bit of, a bit of presence. So I've cranked it up by an additional 4 dB in the level calibration on the receiver and it is now bouncing. It is absolutely lovely. I may need to dial it back ever so slightly because obviously I don't want crazy domination of the center channel over the other channels. But it can be really handy for those films that are mixed very action heavy. Um, often you can get the walls shaking and the kids waking up because of the action, yet we can barely hear the dialogue. You know, that's just how films are mixed. And it's great for cinema, and it's great for home cinema as well, but um, a little bit tricky sometimes when it's late and uh, you've got a pretty beefy set of front speakers. Um, so yeah, I am chuffed, really chuffed. I've got everything back, all the infrared is working. Um, it looks good, you can't even tell that the hub and the Apple TV are there, so it doesn't bother me. I've got the funny thing on the top switched off. When it's in the cabinet and you turn that on, I can't even remember what it's called now, the centre focus thing, it just makes it sound really throaty. It kind of gives it like a, like a weird noise to all the audio. Um, yeah, that's not really the correct noise, but it just makes it sound really throaty. It's kind of horrible. It was lovely when it was outside, but when it's in the cabinet, it's fine just as it is on default settings. Um, so there is one additional massive audio change that we need to do in this video. Oh, look, I'm a CHQ Mark I. <laughs> this photo feature is absolutely awesome on the Apple TV. Um, yeah, there's one more big audio change we need to do relating to that speaker, and we will do it in the next clip. I'm not going to do it this evening because I need some dedicated time because I want to show you guys a few things. So this video is coming out kind of nicely, I think. We're doing some good upgrades to the system. It's a lot cleaner. It sounds a lot nicer. This is a much nicer speaker. And of course now I've got the decent looks back. It doesn't look horrible. In fact, it looks much sleeker. This is as sleek as it's ever looked, guys. So uh, those of you who were asking me to put the speaker in the cabinet right from the very beginning, you've uh, been granted your wish. And yeah, I have to agree, it looks good. And by the way, it's Black Friday today, or the day I'm recording this, and I saw a TV, a 55-inch 4K TV for 299 quid in Tesco today. And uh, yeah, I had to kind of drag myself away. So... <laughs> it's not healthy the comments you guys are leaving me about my tv they're not healthy because they're filtering in i wouldn't have even thought about it before really but i saw that tv there and i was like "Ooh, nice but yeah i don't want a 4k tv if i'm upgrading the tv it'll be to a 1080p model that's a few years old um but just not quite as old as this guy anyway babbling over 
Uh, I'll see you guys in the next clip where we will be doing a little repair to this guy because now that is really letting the setup down. It is now March 2020 and it's been a few months since I gave you guys an update on this setup. The last thing was the saga with the center channel speaker. I'm happy to report that that sounds absolutely magnificent. It is um, a massive upgrade. I'm so glad. Um, in a way, I'm glad that the old one got wrecked because I now know what a much nicer quality center speaker is capable of. Um, I was plenty happy enough with the old one, but this one takes it to a next level. But what you probably notice more in this shot is the new TV. So it's quite hilarious. Throughout this entire series, people have been nagging me to get a new TV because the old one looks so old school with the massive bezels and stuff. Um, I got that TV for free just before we moved into our new home and it's been fantastic and I did not want to upgrade it because it was free, it worked well and for my needs the picture was great. It looked a bit chunky and old school, um, you know, granted, and sometimes when I saw some deals on TVs sometimes I was tempted but it never got to the stage where I actually went out of my way to hunt for a new TV. Unfortunately, that TV died. It still sort of works, but when it starts up, um, when you turn it on first time in the morning when it has to heat up, it's just clicking on and off. There's a relay inside, and I believe it's for the backlight, and it just clicks on, off, on, off, on, off. It's like the tubes are, are going or whatever, um, and it just can't quite strike them or whatever the case is with those CCFL backlights. You know, I don't really know much about them, um, but I, I'm suspicious that it is backlight related because the picture has been getting progressively darker. It was never the brightest TV when we got it, um, but to cut a long story short, the TV would take a good three, four, maybe even five minutes some mornings to start up. And what it would do while it was clicking on and off, and you know, because, I've got patience, I can wait, you know, I, I would have waited that out. But unfortunately what it was doing is it was returning all of the pops and crackles back down into the receiver and the receiver was like clicking on and off with it because obviously it was connecting to the TV and then losing connection. So that was clicking back and forth as well as it was trying to establish a stable connection between the receiver and the TV. So I was getting all sorts of pops and crackles from the receiver. Now the soft start on this receiver is absolutely knackered anyway. So when you turn the TV on, you've got to be careful. You've got to turn the volume down or you've got to remember to turn the volume down before you turn the receiver off because there's all sorts of nasty pops and crackles through the speakers when it starts up. But the TV was making it 10 times worse. So anyway, uh, I'll put the model number of this TV up on the screen right now. I can't memorize it. Um, this is an LG 42 inch LED TV from around 2013, 2014. It's a lower end LED TV, uh, it's 1080p, so it's an upgrade for myself from 720 to 1080. Um, it's a nice enough TV, it looks really smart here, especially compared to the old one. I got it really cheap, basically as soon as I had had enough of the old one and it was playing up more and more, I just went onto Facebook Marketplace and found this TV literally three miles, well under three miles up the road, and I got it for a really nice deal, bought it off a really, uh, really nice bloke as well, who had upgraded to a similar TV, just uh, a smart one instead. So it's nothing groundbreaking, and in fact, there are a few things that I dislike about this TV in comparison to my old one. Firstly, it's LED backlit, of course, um, which is great because it's instant on, it's very bright, it's very crisp. We have the backlight at about half brightness. Um, you know, it's lovely, it pops, but the color temperature is much colder. Uh, the color temperature was nice and warm on the old TV. I didn't like that about it sometimes because if it had been on a really long time, and uh, you're watching certain content, it was kind of yellowish, but f for the most part, especially like watching Blu-rays and stuff, I really, really like the warm glow of that TV. Um, this one being LED, it's very cold, and I've got the tint all cranked all the way up 
to the yellow side as opposed to the blue side. It's just very chilly. I think these days they've really sorted, even on the lower end TVs, I think they've really sorted the whole color temperature thing. Um, the TVs I see like in shops, you know, they aren't too cold, at least sort of to the naked eye. It's kind of hard to compare unless you've got two side by side. Um, but yeah, I generally find this TV too cold. Also on any kind of, um, like flat image, a flat white background, a flat black background. You can see the LED backlights, unfortunately. There's like a grid, four down, five across or six across, and you can see all of them. They're just a slight dot of brightness. Um, I'll see if I can actually find somewhere where you'll notice it. Ooh, and the other thing is, will it? Will the camera pick it up? It probably won't, because it's gonna contend with like the refresh rate of the LEDs anyway, isn't it? can't even see it that well on this menu. It's really got to be a white background to pop or a black background. Um, but you can see there's there's a hue here. You can't see it on camera at all. But yeah, you can, you can make out the LEDs. With my old TV, the backlight was very even. It wasn't even when it first started up, but when, um, when the CCFL backlight, all the tubes, I think there were maybe four in it or something, I don't know. Um, when they warmed up, it was enough to sort of flood the diffuser and then you'd get a lovely even light. You could see them separately when it was starting up, but as soon as it warmed up, it was lovely. Um, so backlight wise, much prefer the old TV, but quality wise, this TV is better being 1080p. It is a nicer pic picture overall, it's crisper. And um, yeah, it'll consume less power as well, which is a big deal. Um, I always try and save power where I can around the house. And this one gives off much less heat. It's a lot thinner. Um, you know, still, still kind of fairly substantial compared to some TVs out there today, but a lot more modern. So yeah, that's about it for the TV. I found, I finally, uh, finally got a new TV. So <laughs> hope you guys are proud of me. So moving on from the TV, because that isn't even really the most exciting part for me. Um, that was just kind of like a necessary step. You know, you can tell I'm still a little bit stubborn about the upgrade because the old one was free and it was doing great. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm sure my relationship with this TV will improve over time. Um, oh, by the way, one quick thing. This one is a lot worse at picking up infrared. So what I had to do is move the entire Harmony hub up to this level on top here, which kind of kills the symmetry of the setup. But I don't know why the remote itself isn't blasting out infrared because surely, you know, it should pick it up from there, but I was having great difficulty. So I need to look into that. Um, I don't know if there's a way you can actually test whether this is blasting out. I've got it enabled in the settings, but it just doesn't appear to make a difference when I pointed at the TV. Um, it wasn't working with Harmony for the longest time, but I'm glad I discovered it was just an infrared problem because I was kind of seconds away from resetting all of my activities and starting from scratch, which would have taken forever. Um, but anyway, much more excitingly, um, the previous thing that I spoke about in the video was something that we needed to do sound-wise with this speaker. And you guys have probably noticed by now I've got two tweeters sat here. And these tweeters, if we just pop the cover on these guys, these are Technics SB3030 speakers. They get a battering in here with the kids, but they are still going strong. And um, for the most part, still in okay-ish condition. They look perfectly acceptable anyway. Um, so here are the tweeters. Well, this is one tweeter. There's another one in that other speaker, of course. And what I've done is I've brought my laptop down with me because I'm gonna give you guys a demonstration of what audio we've been putting up with for the last nearly a year, I think, since this tweeter popped. Now, unfortunately, um, since you know planning all of this, I do believe that the mid-range driver is also gone in this speaker, but I've not managed to find a replacement mid-range driver. So we'll replace the tweeter, see how much difference it makes, um, because the mid-range seems to do a lot of work on these particular three-way speakers. So that's another reason why I brought my laptop down, just to run a few sort of, um, kind of like, uh, I'll run a few like tones and things like that so we can hear what's going on. I really wanna hear what the system is doing and I won't be able to do that with any kind of content, not very accurately anyway. Um, so yeah, I'd like to give a big shout out to Rowan, RWL2012 on YouTube. He basically reached out to me as soon as I put out that I needed tweeters for these speakers. He reached out to me, he said I got tweeters and we worked out a really nice deal. He gave me an awesome deal. 
for these two. He had some more as well, but I just went for two. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry, man, that it's taken me this long to make the video about upgrading them. I was looking back at our emails and I, I literally said like months and months ago that I was going to do it. Um, but, you know, like everything, I get there in the end and uh, I do really appreciate it, buddy. As I say, he gave me an awesome deal and the packaging was was brilliant. So they've, they've come in one piece in kind of perfect condition. So I'm chuffed and uh, hopefully they both fire up. I'm only going to obviously swap one. I've got one as another spare. Hopefully you'll never need to use it. I don't even know how this blew in the first place. I don't know what content was playing back or anything like that. But that soft start thing on the receiver definitely does not help. Uh, so let's get listening. We can't crank the volume too high because the baby is asleep, but we don't need high volume for this. We just need it loud enough so that we can kind of determine what frequencies are doing what with each of these speakers. So I've connected my laptop directly via HDMI and I've made sure that the receiver is only taking the direct left and right. So um, we're dealing with just this speaker and that speaker, that's the dodgy one. This is the working one. So I'm going to use something from the YouTube audio library. Let's just pick something completely random. Um, just to try and avoid copyright. Um, let me find something bright. This is cool. It's got like a Stranger Things vibe about it. So we're listening for high end here, folks. Let's listen to this speaker. Obviously using my camera's microphone, so take it for what it is. Now have a listen to this speaker. Now in person, when I'm physically next to that speaker, I can actually, where's the remote? When I'm physically next to that one, I can hear the obvious difference in high end. I can, I can actually physically hear the location of this speaker because of course, as you get higher in frequency, sound becomes more directional. So these super high frequencies that we're missing from this side, I can just clearly, my ear just zones in on that one straight away, even when I'm directly in front of that speaker. So to give you a better test, I should have really found some good audio. See if we can just get another quick. Ah, oh, this sounds okay. So again, Nice and bright. Dull as anything. So, a little quick test to set up over here. Now, this is basically just a frequency generator. If I turn it on here, this is a frequency of 1K, 1 kilohertz. Now, you can hear that through the left speaker and the right speaker, perfectly fine. That is absolutely fine. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna ramp it up a little bit by using the dial here. Let's go up to roughly 5K. Let's go over to the dodgy speaker. You can still hear it, still sounds okay. But down on the left, it's significantly louder. And then let's ramp it up, something quite high now. Something quite high, go up to say 11, 11K. And we'll go over. Now then, this is fascinating. Now this is gonna be difficult for you to pick up over camera. The, firstly, this camera may not even, the the interference in, in the horrible noise that's in this camera might block this out completely, but you can hear that 11K frequency you can hear that it is just kind of like softly coming out of the woofer, which is just crazy. Now, if I just flip it over to the left, it is like 10 times louder and it is piercing right out of that tweeter into my ears. I'm gonna turn it off because of the baby. It's not very pleasant at all. So it's, you can physically hear the location of the tweeter with the frequency like that playing back. Now, another good test is if we just put on some pink noise for a second. Let's enable that and bring it up. Now that is full range pink noise from a functioning speaker. And then,
pink noise through that guy night and day so what i'll do i sit in the middle and i'll flip the pan and you guys will be able to hear the difference so So essentially, a blown tweeter, hopefully. Now, for those of you who are used to working with speakers and sound a lot, this will be really dull and boring for you because yeah, it's a blown tweeter, whoop de doo you know, just replace it and move on. I'm just hoping that for people that maybe haven't encountered something like this, that'll be a little kind of demonstration as to some of the things to look out for. If you're experiencing dull sounds from one of your speakers, you can pretty much nine times out of 10 assume that it's a blown tweeter. Uh, of course, you can get problems with other things, such as the crossover in the back of the speaker cab itself for a passive speaker like this. Um, but most of the time, you've probably just popped a little tweeter. Um, there, are little, there are some tricks you can do to test it when it comes out. Just stick it on a multimeter um, and measure the resistance, and you'll get the impedance of the tweeter. It should be kind of stable, like around whatever impedance it is. Uh, if it's dead, you won't get any readout at all because it's, you know, blown. Um, you can also stick a battery on it and you can sort of click the diaphragm out if you want to try that trick. Um, there, are, there are loads of little tricks to see if you have actually got a dead horn. Sometimes it's just a tired horn or a stuck horn and it needs a good blast to get it unstuck. But if it sticks, then it'll probably stick repeatedly. Uh, so a swap out is probably good anyway. Um, so yeah, I don't have my multimeter here today. It's in work. So what we're going to do is we're just going to swap it and we're going to use our ears because they are your best tool anyway. So we'll quickly whip that tweet around and whip the new one in. Check this out guys, speakers from 1980 and the screws are well and truly rusted inside. That's quite interesting. These have never been removed I don't think. So they might take a bit of persuasion. Let's have a look. And here we go. So, looks like they just pull off, which is nice and handy. I'm going to need my two hands to do this. So here is the new one plugged in. What we'll do before wrestling with those ancient screws, we'll give it a quick go. And we'll give it a go right now. So, we have got the pink noise up which is probably the easiest test let's have a little listen by the way you should turn your amplifier off folks if you're going to swap a um, uh, speaker driver anything really just turn your amplifier off okay that's the full range side hopefully they'll both be relatively full range after this hey hey So you can hear the difference straight away. They are now both relatively the same. Now there is still a big difference in sound and I am 99% sure that I'm getting nothing at all from this mid-range driver, which is a pain because that's gonna be difficult to find. Um, I'm gonna put my ear right up to them and take a good listen now and just see before I give you guys my final verdict. But yeah, I need a mid-range, I do believe. If anything, this new tweeter is actually brighter than the left-hand channel, which is quite interesting. Um, but yeah, that could, that could be anything really. You know, if I swap them over, it could be like the physical location in the room or anything like that. Um, it's nice to get the high frequencies back from this guy because you get direction now what was happening is things were panning from this side to that side and you'd just lose them as soon as they'd go past center channel they'd just drop off you could hear the lower end stuff obviously but they'd just completely lose presence so now that that tweeter has changed they're going to have some kind of presence but unfortunately still for like music playback and stuff all of the the bulk of it seems to be like the bulk of the mid-range really is missing um from that box over there so you know that's okay i'm chuffed with this as like a sort of halfway there step um but i'm gonna need to find one of those because 
it needs to be done they are noticeably different especially with male vocal because that's the kind of all the frequencies we're talking about there um, but luckily you know these aren't like really spot on harsh cut off accurate crossovers you get a little bit of everything in all three <laughs> speakers you know you, you get a lot of high end in this in this woofer that's why it was so hard to kind of demonstrate it properly but that is a good upgrade and again thank you to rowan for sending over these tweeters i now have a spare i mean i presume this one works just as well as the one i've put in um chuffed about that this one is complete toast i'm not going to chuck it yet um, because i will test it outside the box just in case there was some kind of um something funky going on but you know obviously 99 percent sure that thing is dead so that is pretty much it folks um this is i believe the seventh part sixth seventh part of the home entertainment setup video series uh in the next part we'll follow up on that projector stuff hopefully we'll be swapping in a mid-range driver and doing whatever else crops up along the way that needs to be done so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you all in the next video